Krebs Hydration is a revolutionary product helping athletes across many sports to improve performance and recovery. Krebs is based on over 20 years of medical science, is an SA company, and is also a product that has great health benefits due to its prebiotic nature. Last week, Krebs won the prestigious Innovative Product of the Year Award, amazing stuff, and they were presented by the Australian Institute of Food Science and Technology. They went to some awards over there at the Crown Casino and apparently had a very good night. For more information, go to prepshydration.com.au. The, the real core message of the group is that everyone can run together and there is a place for everyone, no matter what pace you're running. So Bevo, you want to come yeah. out? There's what a place you for you too. Yeah. <laughs> we might have someone slower than you. <laughs> Once again, what a pleasure it is to have Riley Cox and Izzy Bat Doyle on the Sports Legends with Bevo. Thanks Bevo, it's great to be back here again. Thank you, Bebo. Now, since we last caught up, you've become a Commonwealth and Olympic star. Uh, tell us about that experience, Izzy. Yeah, look, the Commonwealth Games was amazing this year. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to compete with crowds and having Riley and my parents there to watch. It was a really awesome experience. And the difference between the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games as well, like you mentioned, actually competing in front of crowds, that must have been you know, just such a buzz. It was, yeah. I think the Olympics was a great experience and a pinnacle of sport to be at the Olympic Games, but it was a bit of a downer not having crowds there. And I felt this year I was actually a bit more prepared for you know, the big stage after having my, um, my race last year at the Games. So yeah, the Commonwealth Games was probably a bit more exciting having the crowd and it was just yeah, an incredible experience to be in Birmingham and it just really came alive for the Games, yeah. And how does one, sorry Riley, we'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> He's used to it, it's okay. I'll head out. <laughs> how, does, how does one prepare for a Commonwealth, uh, for an Olympics with, with no crowd? Because it must be really hard as, as athletes or whatever it might be. You know, I used to play footy for a number of years and, and not having a crowd there, I, I just find it really demotivating. Did you find it pretty tough as well? Like, how, do you just sort of, how do you motivate yourself for something like that? When... Well, I think Riley and I both know that, you know, for runners, we don't get big crowds out to many events. It'd probably be pretty pretty rare to get, I don't know, a thousand people out at, at a stadium to watch us, whether that's here in Adelaide or Melbourne or anywhere in Australia. So we're used to not having a massive crowd, massive energy, and I think we're pretty self-motivated and internally driven. So while the crowds do help, it's not what we're used to. So I, it, I think just going to the Olympics, so you kind of expect it to be that kind of feeling. And so to walk into the Olympic Stadium, which was so massive, you know, and fill it with all these open seats, that experience was a bit strange just because it felt so empty, you know, as opposed to down at Mile End, the track here, it's a pretty small stadium. So without it being full, it feels kind of, you know, feels a bit normal, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't really miss the crowd, but it just felt like it was not the experience that I'd kind of visualised in my head what the Olympics might be. Yeah, we'll get to it in a moment in terms of like what it was like mixing with the, the best athletes in the world and also, you know, the village and that sort of thing. But we better talk to Riley, otherwise he's going to fall asleep. So. <laughs> yeah. Chair's pretty comfy. <laughs> Five years together, you guys. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, now, that's an amazing achievement, not just because it's five years, but also because, Riley, you're Izzy's coach. Sorry, yeah, you're Izzy's coach. I got that correct. Um, now, if I was the coach of my wife or vice versa, there's no way we'd be together for five years, I can tell you right now. So how do you do it? Because because that must be pretty challenging and there must have been quite a few times where you've butted heads and stuff living together and also being in a relationship for five years and also being, being the coach of Izzy. Oh uh, well, yeah, for when when I uh, first started coaching, she was pretty keen to listen to me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> over over time, yeah, she's got uh, many other influences as well. So yeah, she chooses when she listens to me and <laughs> when selective hearing. Yeah, and when she doesn't. So um, we we kind of just um, yeah we work work things out together, work as a team, and yeah, that, that seems to work out quite well. We we always. Um, try to make calculated decisions with, with what we do in life and sport and weigh out the pros and cons and <laughs> the decision uh, usually, yeah, makes it makes itself. Yeah, it's teamwork. True. And we spoke about this last time, but I want to bring it up again because it's such a great story. Uh, when you guys started dating in the early days, apparently you shattered quite a few dinners there as well. Is that true? Is it? it is true. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I wanted to feed him maybe. He was a bit, a bit scrawny. 
<laughs> Still is. Goodness me. <laughs> yeah, it is How true. am I looking on camera? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're looking fine, mate. So, but you're, an, you're an athlete, so that's yeah. okay. <laughs> Five years though later and you're still together, so obviously something's worked out there. Yeah, I think it's the secret of long distance, two and a half years away from each other. <laughs> yeah, we've only spent half the time actually together, so. Yeah. Note, note to self, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We think that, might be, um, that might be a bit of a secret. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and speaking of doing things together, you've also got a wonderful business called Runners One. Explain sort of how that idea came about and it's going great guns. Uh, tell us all about it, Izzy. Yeah, so it started back in 2020 and it's grown from a handful of our family and friends to what, 350 runners in the community. And it's really like one big family. Uh, we have a big group that meets at Victoria Park twice a week and on the weekends. And that's kind of the core of, of the business. But we also coach other runners remotely across Australia and actually a across the world. And yeah, we, we love it. We can't believe that we've been able to make running and running coaching our, our job. And we're just, yeah, really enjoying the process and really excited for everything we've got going on with the business at the moment. That's so cool. so cool. And how can people get involved that you know want to? Uh, so yeah, obviously if you if you see us out at the park, if you're local around at Victoria Park, everyone's welcome to come out for a run. We um we have a membership, so we have a number of memberships. So we do catch up with you eventually to um, <laughs> sign you up for a membership. Uh, the but first month it's free though. The so first yeah. month is free, so um, yeah, it's pretty easy to to get involved. You can check us out on social media, Instagram. Uh, we have a website, www.runners1.com.au, and when you head on there, there's a, a spot to send us a form submission or expression of interest to join the group, and um, we're usually pretty responsive with information on how to join and what we're about there. So Yeah, but yeah. the whole thing about Runners 1, and the name says it, is um, we really wanted to create a space where you could run together, whether you were an elite runner, an Olympian, or someone just starting out running, uh, a local park runner who was just, you know, working up to running their first 5K continuously. So the the real um, core message of the group is that everyone can run together and there is a place for everyone, no matter what pace you're running. So Bevo, you want to come <laughs> yeah. out? There's what a place for you too. Yeah. <laughs> we might have someone slower than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hey, I've got under an hour and we've been in the bay a couple of times. Yeah, so yeah, very not good. That He's got that footy fitness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You should be right then. <laughs> and, and speaking of running, uh, on the weekend, finished second in the Australian Cross Country Championship, so congratulations on that, Riley. Thank you. Pretty muddy conditions up there at Oatbank. How did you find the experience and, and happy how, how your result in the end? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I was really happy with the result. I surprised myself a bit. Beat home a number of very well-credentialed runners and I think in the end, the challenges of cross country and yeah, it was, it was very different to perhaps what we normally experience even in cross country. I mean, a lot of our courses in Australia are fairly tame, so to speak, you know, cross country, but it's a few little mounds and, and bit of grass here and there. But uh, Oak Bank was, yeah, pretty about a True foot deep country, of yeah. mud the whole way around. So it was um, just so much of a challenge in itself to get around the, the course five times, let alone racing the other competitors. So it was a real, yeah, battle of attrition. That reminds me, we still haven't washed Riley spikes. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't they know. were sitting in a bag, like just covered, completely covered in mud. You couldn't even tell what colour they are. I might have on. to get a new pair. I don't know yeah. if I'll ever get, get them back again. <laughs> I know exactly what it's like because oh. I played footy at Birdwood for a number of years. And, and like you guys know, that the hills conditions that. I remember games where there'd be no grass on the oval at all and you just come off and, and yeah, like you said, Izzy, you have to basically almost get a new pair of boots because there's just absolute mud everywhere. So, yeah, I, I should, know what it's yeah, like. Yeah, so. I should have got the hose straight on them, but <laughs> yeah. it might be pretty, pretty uh, gone now, I don't know. <laughs> good fun, good fun. Yeah. And, and 2019 as well, you won the Adelaide Half Marathon, which is a, a massive achievement. How are you going sort of with 2024 with Paris? Are you close to potentially getting in the squad for that? Uh, look, the times I'll, I'll be aiming for the marathon. I've only done one marathon, so uh, I don't know. Haven't yeah, I don't know my full potential yet. But the times are extremely tough to get, and uh, I got one eye on it. But also, yeah, just continuing to improve and exploring my potential in the marathon. And yeah, if I was able to get myself up to that level, I'd, I'd definitely yeah go all in and trying to make Paris in 2024. 
Fingers crossed, mate. So, yeah. And Izzy, what's uh, where to from now for yourself after being in the Olympics Commonwealth Games? Yeah, I have a lot of goals still on the track, but I'm also doing my first marathon um, at Melbourne Marathon in just over a month's time. So that's, oh, wow. yeah, a new challenge for me. I ran the marathon, I ran the half marathon, sorry, at Melbourne Marathon Festival last year, and I won that and I set a new course record, I think by about 45 seconds. So wow. I was really happy with my debut half marathon. Yeah step it up this year, do the full distance and just kind of worked out with the timing. I've wanted to do a marathon for a number of years. So um, yeah, looking forward to a new challenge. And then I'll kind of switch my focus back to the track for the National 10K Championships in December. And then we'll see what the next year brings ahead. But yeah, I've got goals for next year to kind of get towards the qualifying standards for the next Olympic cycle. And as Riley said, the, the standards are really tough. Like, it, you know, it was tough to make the last Olympics um, and the Commonwealth Games this year, but they've just keep increasing the standards that you have to run. So yeah, hopefully I can hit those times and, and also be up amongst the best competitors in Australia and, and get a, a spot. But I think the main focus for us is always just improving and trying to be consistent and trying to progress forward each year. So yeah, always just focusing on getting a little bit better. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, I heard a bit of a story the other day that you did a 33k run and you were thirsty as anything and you went to your own cafe. You're looking for a preps drink. You know, again, we'll shout out to the preps and there was no drink in the yeah. fridge, Izzy. I know, sure. I know. So Sunday was my longest run ever. It was just over 33 kilometres and it was actually a bit warmer than it's been. So it's been so wet and rainy in Adelaide. And then Sunday was the first day that it was, I think, 21, 22 degrees and it was yeah. sunny. I, you know, I was running in a sports bra. I was starting to get pretty warm towards the end of my run. I had a bit of uh, a pickup towards the end of my run. So I was, you know, I was working pretty hard. I was coming back to the shop and I just been thinking about drinking my prep recover the last probably 30 minutes when I was sweating it out. And then I got back and I went straight to the fridge. I like walked past a couple of people and I was like straight into the cafe and opened, I looked at the fridge and it was just sold out, gone. And I Damn was vibe. my face probably, I think Andrew saw my face and I was just like, <laughs> Oh, you're, you're kidding. Like, I can't even get a prep to, at my own, <laughs> my own shop. <laughs> not, a, not a bad problem to have. Not a bad problem, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but luckily we had some of the prime. So there's a prime that you have before exercise and a recover that you have after. And they're pretty, the, the prime is just a higher starch content and it doesn't have the electrolytes that the recover does, but it, it tastes pretty similar. So I just smashed a prime instead and then, yeah, had another recover later uh, when I got home because I had some at home. But yeah, it was pretty funny. That had is. a bit of a laugh after it, but I was pretty annoyed to begin with. At the time, I can imagine, yeah, you're yeah. looking for this drink and yeah. it's not there. So, uh, yeah. And we'll get to the run house in a moment, because uh, I want to get back to your own experience in the Olympics and Commonwealth mm -hmm. Games. Did you get to come up close and personal to any of your idols and, you know, whether it be the Olympics or the Commonwealth Games? And, and what was the village experience like there as well? Yeah, so yeah, at the Olympics, um, it was a bit different because with COVID, the regulations at the time there, everything was pretty segregated and going to the athlete dining hall, you know, you were supposed to be in and out. You didn't really, you couldn't really mingle with other countries and other people. So I didn't really see anyone there. I, I saw Ash Barty, uh, didn't say hi to her because I was just a bit starstruck at the time. <laughs> but yeah, you're walking past people all the time who you, you know, you watch on TV in various sports and you're kind of like, ah, but you're also like, I'm Olympian, I'm here. Ah, like you're trying to have to, you know, you fangirl a bit, but you also have to focus on your own, um, you know, your own competition too and, and be like in, in race mode. At the Commonwealth Games, it was a bit more able to mingle and yeah, chat to other people from other countries. And it was really cool in both my 10k and 5k race I got to uh, I would say race against but I didn't I wasn't any, not anywhere near her at the time Eilish McColgan who's an incredible Scottish athlete she won the 10k and broke her own mother's like 30 year old record at the Com Games and she came second in the 5k and I got to chat to her afterwards and oh. I really look up to her she's an amazing runner she's just so gritty and so yeah she's a really lovely person and, and really vulnerable and really open on social media and kind of brings everyone along for the journey so yeah, it was cool to, cool to actually meet her and get to run against her in a race, so yeah. What a cool story as well, and, and hearing people that are so down to earth, that are so good, is, is, I just love hearing those sort of yeah, things. Yeah, like, it is really yeah. like, great to meet people like that, like she's super, super humble and down to earth, and you do get competitors who are pretty, or, almost above everyone else, yeah. like, uh, you know, personalities like Jakob Ingeritsen, you know, who runs the 15 and 5k, he's a pretty like confident and like showy competitor, and then you've got the different personalities out there, and it all adds to the sport, but yeah, it was pretty cool to, to meet Eilish and to, yeah, be able to have a conversation with her and yeah, feel like yeah, you're you're amongst it. Most most distance runners are, are fairly down to earth. There's, yeah, we have to be. There's <laughs> not too much um, not too much fame and fortune 
<laughs> with um, dis- with distance running, so they're um, not like you say bolts with the uh, the way he carried on with his yeah, runs and stuff yeah. like that. It's a lot. So, of, it's a lot yeah. of hard work. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, maybe not quite as much uh, reward. Well, yeah. a lot of these top athletes who are you know multiple Olympic, Commonwealth Games, world medalists, they you know they probably go other places outside running and no one recognises them. It's you know yeah. it's a small probably. A, a p- amount of people that you know see them as as famous and and celebrities um to a lot of the people they're just uh, someone who runs yeah have you been noticing getting people like uh, asking for selfies since the yeah, Commonwealth Games Olympics? It's a funny or? one because you never think of yourself as being like you know famous or anything like that, and I'm I'm definitely not. Most people probably don't know who I am, but um, oh, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had a really funny experience um, after the Olympics. I was at Foodland doing some grocery shopping, and I got absolutely swarmed by um a, like a group of like six or seven people, and it was a few kids and their parents, and they wanted Ooh. to get a couple pictures with me, and I was like, what? Like, oh, yeah. I'm just at Foodland, but. <laughs> yes, that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, subsequently I've seen seen those kids uh, around, and yeah, I feel really like humble when I I get people wanting to take a photo with me or you know me to sign something. I went to park run the other day and I volunteered, did the barcode scanning, and a lady came up to me and she'd come all the way from her regular Mawson Lakes park run to to the big, big park park run and brought her whole family and wanted to get a photo with me, and oh. I was kind of like, what? Like, <laughs> oh. but yeah, it's really lovely and uh, I really appreciate the support. So you can't wear your yoga boots and dags anymore <laughs> because you just never know where you're going to be know, and yeah. when people want a photo. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. And in, in terms of the village as well, like um, I've heard some great stories and obviously things have changed a bit with COVID and what have you, but uh, you know, what was the, the meal that you had after your race? Did you smash some macros? Oh my or gosh, it's so. actually a funny story, Bebo. <laughs> so we, uh, my race was pretty late. I think it was like 8 o'clock at night and then, you know, you warm down and, you know, it's 9.30, you get on the bus. It took a while to get on the buses back from the track. It was about half an hour out of Birmingham City. And I'd found this place online, pizza, open till 10.30, great. We walked there, we got there, and it was, it was a sign on the wall saying, sorry, we are closed due to unforeseen circumstances. <gasps> And it was no. like, damn it, okay, we'll find somewhere else. Literally not one restaurant was open in Birmingham after like 9.30 on a Sunday night. So we went back to our Airbnb that my parents and Riley were staying in and I literally, my, my post-race meal was a sandwich in a packet that I got from like a vending machine earlier that day. Oh no! <laughs> it was very sad. <laughs> I know. I was like, this is not my pizza that I wanted. I think they ran out of dough or something. They, anyway. weren't, re- they weren't ready for the the Common Girls Games yeah. crowd. But in the end, I had a dairy-free Magnum and a glass of. Pinot Noir, and I was a happy girl, so yeah, hey, not, not too not, bad. Not bad, not yeah, bad. Not, yeah. too bad. not yeah. quite as good as the uh, nine, nine Maccas I used to have at Atlanta yeah. that I used to hear about back in the day. So. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before we finish up today, Riley, I'll ask you a question because uh, Izzy's done so much talking today. So yeah. <laughs> give, give me a, a break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Run House, tell us about it. You know, how can people come along and, and where the idea come about and everything? Yeah, so the Run House is, uh, we call it the a coffee shop with a runner's twist. Basically, as our runners one community began to grow to quite quite large numbers, we were sort of looking for places to that would accommodate us post run and and stuff like that. And um, hundred people, a lot yeah. of people weren't <laughs> yeah weren't sort of ready for a big crowd of sweaty runners to <laughs> to lob on <laughs> lob in their cafe. So the other side of it was because we also do uh, retail as well, like running running gear and. Um, yeah a few accessories as well so we were doing a lot of like our merchandise out the back of my car and full of stuff boxes, like that so and, just, yeah. um, and then so yeah we sort of set up a combination of retail and and coffee shop and it's right it's close to Vic Park on Charles Street Norwood 38 Charles Street Norwood Beautiful. Um, <laughs> and yeah so um, we just opened it up quite a unique place for uh, runners to hang out but we're also really um, we're just also just another coffee shop that that sells really good coffee and we <laughs> use Hark Beans which um, we've been getting a lot of really positive feedback about so yeah we're working at it from a number of different angles and really happy that we've been so well supported by the running community in SA and also got a number of regular locals coming through as well so yeah things are working well. And how'd you actually get the property? Like, how did that come about? Yeah, I kind of came up with the idea not all that long ago. Um, when Riley makes a decision or has an idea, yeah. uh, you find that very quickly, 
full steam ahead <laughs> and it's just going to happen and he makes it happen. So Yeah, awesome. so I think it was earlier in the, oh, it was obviously earlier in the year, but I think it was around March that I sort of thought, oh, maybe we need a place to sort of hang when out. The, and... When Riley had the idea, it was kind of like, yeah, that'd be nice in the future, like in a couple of years' time, okay. <laughs> and then it was kind of like he'd started finding, a, you know, commercial real estate and was looking at, you know, leases that were available. And it was just a matter of kind of finding the right place that fit what we wanted. And it was pretty specific because it had to be close to the parklands and accessible for our running routes um, and also have space that we could, um, you know, sit outside and hang out while we're, and also have a retail space inside. And so I saw, yeah, I saw we're very lucky to have a number of people that ment business mentors, people that work with us who share that sort of work ethic in, and vision to, to just get things done and, and move quickly. So we're right on to looking at all these different places and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, what have I got myself into? Like, <laughs> there's this place and it, it looks pretty um, ideal for what we're after. It was very, it's very run down. It was very run down and it's a heritage listed building. So, oh, the frontage of it is. So um, it has nice character. I wasn't really looking for a really modern place, but more like a homely feel on the corner th uh, there and enough space and and sort of lay out for what, what we wanted with a combination of uh, sports retail and coffee and, and we get to hang out there out the back as well when we're not out the front serving coffee. So <laughs> yeah, so that, that worked out well and then um, we just continued to pursue that and every time that we came to a block in the road, just took a deep breath and <laughs> Went straight through I it. I missed so. all the construction renovations. Yeah. I was overseas gallivanting, <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> around the world. Well, I just got off the plane and, and walked into this beautiful shop that was all renovated and done up perfectly. And um, I think I've made the hard, hard yards. I think I've made more decisions in the last yeah couple of months than uh, I'll maybe ever have to make. So, um, what colour do you want this? What this? What's that? Uh, what run should I do today? Just yeah. saw shoulders and carrying the team as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. He's been carrying the load. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it really was a team effort though. We are yeah. very lucky that I think runners won, you know, it, w and we have such a good support system that everyone kind of chipped in for, from our own families and, and our own, you know, our own group. Well, as well, we got so many members with different expertise, profession, skills that we can rely on who really do enjoy what we do for them and, and love to offer us help. So we're we're very fortunate to have a community like that. But I will say that the Run House, it's not just for runners. We are runners and that's what we know, but we also are trying to provide, yeah, really high quality coffee and just be another place that people can come to because um, kind of that area of town, there are plenty of options available, but you have to go pretty far up the parade or, or Kensington Road to get to get a coffee. And so we're kind of providing, yeah, a back street, kind of local, nice place to hang out, get your local coffee. That's sort of a, a challenge a bit as well because we very clearly present as runners and, and the shop as well. We and, serve in our running gear sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> um, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback about the coffee, so the locals are really enjoying what we're doing there and, the, and what we've done with the building to really liven it up. And, yeah, the sort of energy that, that we bring to the street has been, um, I think, well-received generally. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait to come down and have a coffee with you guys. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're, we're always there, so um, I don't Literally. know how many coffees I can uh, have in a day, but um, I might have a few decafs and soy <laughs> chai mixed Riley in. Riley wasn't drinking coffee until he became a cafe. And coffee shop owner. I'm very quickly a coffee connoisseur now. Yeah. Good, good man. There you go. Well, Riley Cox, Izzy Bat Doyle, thanks so much for coming on uh, the sports legend. I was about to say comedy legends of ever. <laughs> yeah. We've got that yeah, in my mind. that many yeah, jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sports legends of ever. Um, so great to, to catch up with you as, as always and uh, keep up the great work. You know, all the very best with not only Runners One, Run House, but your own personal endeavours as well of, of, of getting there for Paris 2024. Thank you thanks so much. Bye -bye.